Hey, hey, guess what? I've got the new Fujifilm X Pro 3 and it looks flipping brilliant. As you know, X Pros are kind of aimed at street photographers, and street photographers are all about all oh, the moment. So, this camera is not exactly going to be conventional. Unless you consider 1.6 inch square LCD, where a regular LCD screen should be, is what you call conventional. We'll get to the flipping screen in a minute, but in terms of body, the size, and weight, same as before, it feels exactly the same. Although now, you've got titanium top and bottom plates. Not that you can really see that because it's covered with paint. But anyway, what's with that flipping flip screen? It's gonna be nearly impossible to go through Borough Market without eating stuff while shooting. But anyway, yeah, the whole point of this flip screen is that you focus on just your shooting using the viewfinder and not chimping, that's the key point because it's covered up. You can still chimp, you can still flip it open, but that's a bit fiddly. That's a bit of a flipping faff, isn't it? You know, I keep promising myself a Fuji because they're great cameras and I don't have one already. And once you look at a straight out of Karen JPEGs, lush, those colors are simply gorgeous. Anyway, back to that titanium top and bottom plate. A titanium top plate won't be as easy to make as your regular mag alloy top plate. And although titanium doesn't make the body lighter than a mag alloy one, it is harder and resists corrosion, although it does scratch. But it's fancy, it's space age, it sounds cool when you say titanium. And you've got three different finishes, you've got black, you've got Dura black, and Dura silver. The Dura tech coating is some fancy tech used for citizen watchers, which provides a super scratch resistant coating. So you get the toughness of titanium and the coating which will minimize the chance of paint being scratched off. And it'll be totally fine if you sneeze all over your camera because it's got weather sealing. The X-Pros are noted for having the hybrid viewfinder, optical and electronic viewfinder. This one has got a new hybrid viewfinder. It's got a new electrical viewfinder. 3.69 million dots, which is impressive. It looks like real life. It's bigger, higher res, more contrasty with better color repro and higher frame rate, i.e. it's better. The EVF is really rather good. They spouted off a load of specs that really don't make much sense to me, but um, it looks good. Lag free, 100 FPS, 3.69 million dots, can't complain, looks good. For the OVF, as a slightly higher eye point, 17mm versus 16mm of the X-Pro2, so the viewfinder can be seen for a bit further back. Capture area is 95% versus 92% and 27 degree horizontal angle view versus 24mm. Well, this is optical, so it does look like real life because it is real life. I am a pure sucker for that Fujifilm hybrid finder. Having the OVF with all that information, it's simply fantastic. It makes these cameras great work tools, not just for some fancy pants person to pose with. So off I went to test it on something other than cheese and paella. I mean, as far as discrete cameras go, this is right up there. If you don't go for the Leicas, this is top notch. Forget electronic shutter, the sound is nice and muted with a focal plane shutter and you get eight thousandths of a second max shutter speed. In terms of speed, it's quicker than before, it's 11 fps, 11 fps continuous burst, same as the X-T3 and also the autofocus, it's really quick now, it's also sensitive to minus 6 EV, which is dark, super dark. It's like the latest gen of Fujis that have kick-ass AF capabilities for stills or video, accurate and fast, although I probably wouldn't use the X-Pro3 for video. In terms of video, now you can shoot 4K DCI up to 15 minutes, but look, the X-Pro has never really been about video and this more than ever really isn't a video camera because if you want to use the LCD screen, you have to use it like that. And you probably won't be able to flip all the way down if you got on a tripod. And then it has a 2.5 millimeter mic and boot with no HDMI out and 4K 30p, no 60p like the X-T3. But it's somewhat forgiven when it's so good for the still stuff with the optical finder or electronic methods. Though I'm still not entirely sure about that flip screen. Yep, so the flippy flippy flip screen that doesn't flip all the way, it shows your film simulation, a bit like the old film cameras. Check that out. I like the concept of it, but when you know that there's a screen under there, your fingers are kind of itching to get under there to have a look at the screen. I can't really do it anyway, because I've only got one hand to use. 
but you can use it as a kind of like a, a top-down screen. It doesn't, it doesn't flip any further than that. So you still have to put it in front of you. So you can't go all the way up like that. You know what, I think I'm just going to come to the conclusion that even though it has an LCD screen for live view, they really don't want you to use it that much. It doesn't, it doesn't really work for top-down shot, but there you go. I mean, if you're using the EVF, if you're using the OVF, you can't do top-down shots anyway. It's all about having a camera to your eye. It's all, it's all about, it's, it's all about the decisive moment and, and crap like that, yeah? It's also got a new film simulation. They've added monochromatic colour for coloured monochromatic shots. Hmm, and classic negative. The new film simulation's got a kind of cooler temperature to it. Not as warm, not as saturated, quite a kind of retro look to it. All right, it's only got two megapixels more at 26 megapixels, but it's not bad megapixels. I really feel that Fujifilm are king of the JPEGs. They just do it so well for anyone who really can't be bothered to open up Lightroom or Photoshop. They look so good without doing anything to them. With the new body, the refreshed focus feel, it's faster, less shutter lag, gets you 370 shots on one charge. This could be the camera to scratch my Fuji itch. They've added more more stuff than this too. Then what else have we got? We have got a AF range limiter. It's kind of like the little switch you see on the lenses, which can limit the focus distance from say, two meters to infinity, five meters to infinity. Then you've got a custom option to customize it, obviously. And the cool thing is it's got in-camera HDR, 800%, and supposedly it doesn't look too bleh, it doesn't look like a whole load of vomit of Skittles. One top, top feature of this is that you can shoot TIFF, 8-bit or 16-bit TIFF, a bit like the GFX, but now, it's on the next camera. Then you've got focus bracketing, which I probably will never use, but some geek will. Overall, it feels good, it feels nice, it feels nice and tight. Sounds dodgy, but it feels good on the street. With the 11 FPS, autofocus speed is nice and quick. The X Pro 3 by sheer specs alone will surely win over a load of photojournalists and street photographer types, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be this flippy screen that flips perhaps the wrong way that might be the potential deal killer. No matter what the specs are, no matter how good this camera performs, no matter how tough that titanium is and difficult to produce, the internet will be ablaze with mostly not comments about that, but rather the screen. Leica gets away with it because it fits the whole ethos. It's a different crowd. For a piece of tech meant for the masses, we'll just have to find out. But if you're looking, you should definitely try out the X-Pro3 before you make any conclusions because you just might like it a lot. Check these toilets out. It's like you're pissing on London.